Hey guys, it's Deckeran here and welcome back to another review video. Today we got something special for you guys because we got early access to a new webcam from OBS Bot, the OBS Bot Tail Air. That is right, this is a new webcam that just recently came out from them and I'm honestly looking forward to testing with it. Usually these AI webcams are very expensive. This one actually costs around $413 or something like that uh, since it's new and I want to go over the question, is this worth buying and what kind of use case would you usually use it for if you were going to get one? for yourself and going over the features so you already know the price but the big thing you got to keep in mind that it has a micro usd card slot so you can actually record video onto this and also has a wi-fi area if you want to plug in uh mic and some other jazz and it also has the power on and off button and of course you have the USB C and an analog so now that you know all the ui stuff let's actually do the unboxing because this is like after the unboxing so let's get right into that then right after that we'll actually do uh the features and going over how this thing works so let's do the unboxing first of all you got the obs tail air box i'm not gonna lie it's got a very tongue twister name and you can see like this box is very premium looks very good there was actually a super thin tight layer of plastic around it which i already removed because it was really tedious to remove but that's how you know high quality product because it's like a $500 webcam. So uh, let's open this on up. So all we have to do is just popping it on out like this. And when you slip it on out, your course is going to get access to the webcam in itself. So first of all, you get a little packaging that comes with a little manual and stuff on how to use it, which pretty cool. I like the way they have that. It's like a little slip. So you like slip everything back in if you really want to. So that is pretty nice. The next thing you get is the actual casing for the OBS Airtail bot. And you can see like, this is a pretty thick packaging that comes with it. Like honestly, it feels pretty clean too. It's kind of like a rough texture design. It's like similar to what you would get for like a Bose headset case. And of course, when you open it on up, you'll get access to the webcam, the OBS bot Air Tiny, tiny uh, wait, Tail, Tail tail air okay i i'm not gonna lie this uh obs bot webcam has got a very tongue twister name and so this is my first time ever reviewing one of these and i am very much excited you can see this is a 360 degree actual webcam because it's gonna be using ai to track you and of course when you peel off the little lens that comes with it it actually see looks very very clean like yo this looks awesome man now besides the webcam you do have some little packages that come actually in it i assume these are like just attachments for the webcam in itself so we got a usb uh usb okay so this is a dual usb c to two usb c's i'm not entirely sure what this is used this case for maybe this is for like charging or capturing i'm gonna look into that a little bit here then of course you get two more things you get the cable for the webcam in itself it actually is usb c on both ends so it's very high data so you'll be able to transfer a lot more than just having a normal usb cable or usb 3 cable so like USB-C on both sides and of course you can plug one of these on into your webcam and then you would plug the other into uh, your laptop or into your uh, PC to actually capture so that's pretty cool in itself now the cool thing is that they have an adapter that comes with this maybe a USB-C to a USB adapter just in case if you don't have access to that and I'm thinking that this is what this one is it's exactly that so it is it is a USB-C to USB adapter so just in case if you don't have any usb c ports on actually your laptop or computer you can actually plug this on the end of it and then plug it into your computer and that way you can actually use it uh just in case if you don't have a usb c port so that is pretty nice so let's set this webcam on up now okay the first thing you want to do is take your tripod and connect it to the actual webcam that or you can set it around your studio because it's flat enough base that it doesn't really matter for me i'm gonna put this onto my tripod and put it in the side of the studio where my usually side cam goes the next thing you want to do is take the USB C cable that came with the camera and actually plug it into the back side of it so that way you can actually charge it and use it so you don't have to worry about the power going out on it. So once you plug this on into the actual camera then you can actually turn it on and once you turn it on it'll start working for itself. It'll turn blue first and when you know it's good it's going to be green. With that our camera's all set to go. The next thing you need to do is download the actual app for this. Now, keep in mind that iOS is not coming up until a little bit later, but for Android, what you wanna do is go to the link I have down below and you'll get this page right here. And what you wanna do is click is install. And it's gonna say download, so you wanna just click confirm. Now, keep in mind that if it does ask you if it doesn't wanna install because it's not confirmed within Google settings, because it's not safe, then all you have to do is just like apply that you allow the download on Google settings 
And with that, you go into your details. Once the app is downloaded, all you have to do is click, and then all you have to do is click install, and it's gonna run an installation for it. Once it's done, you can click open. Once you get into open, you just need to make an account, register, and sign in. So I have an existing account, but if you go with the process, you click register now, and you go through the whole process of actually registering. But for me, since I already have one, I'm just gonna sign in. Once you're signed in, you're gonna get the default settings like this. And of course, it'll probably notice your camera out there because it sends a signal wirelessly. So we're gonna click allow and we're gonna connect a camera and use this app while using this, so this is fine. And with that, our camera is actually good to go. Okay, now that we got the camera set up on our actual phone and stuff, I wanna go over the features of this device. First of all, let's go over the specs. This is a 4K 30 webcam, which actually supports also 1080 60. Now, Keep in mind how this webcam works is that you can have an aux in and go for a mic, which is pretty nice. So if you have a wireless device, you can connect them for your aux cable and have a receiver and transmitter. And that way you can actually get audio that way or that you can just put a mic on the side. Now, keep in mind too that this is using NDI for actually its audio and video, meaning that if you try to capture it on a 2.5 uh, video network, it won't work that well. I'll have like a bit of lag like you see right now. I'm catching on my five gig network, which is actually my cellular device. No, I have five gig in my house. However, it was acting weird with the actual application, which doesn't mean that your five gig will be bad. Mine maybe just because of the fact that like, was it seven or eight people in my house right now? Cause like there's a party going on. That's another story for another day. But the thing about this is though, is that that's kind of an issue with the actual thing. Now it looks really, really good. Don't get me wrong, but you cannot use this via USB-C to the computer, to USB, to actually just capture as a video webcam on OBS or just from any application itself. Now they do have a tiny uh, two OBS bot webcam, which has its own separate software that can actually be captured in OBS via the software that way. Um, OBS bot, you need to do the following. You need to make sure this webcam can be used in the tiny two software as well. That way it has to lock the full potential. Now. I'll go into more of my reasoning behind that later, but let's go over now the features of this actual device. First of all, we actually have presets. You can set different presets depending on what you want to do. So like right now, this is my face cam preset, but you want to add another, you click the plus P, but of course let's just drag it around. Let's try to our gimbal by clicking that icon. Let's just add a keyboard cam for a second here. So we can add this. And of course you can drag and increase the actual gimbal's zoom in speed by our movement speed by around if you want to. I would not recommend doing that, but you can. But let's just say, for example, we want to have it slow. Then if we want to zoom in that device, we can add like a zoom here and you see this is going to be a preset on how it's going to look actually on your device and itself. So when it starts recording, it's going to record what the top part is. That's going to be the zoom. And it's kind of cool that it gives you kind of that indicator. It's a bit confusing, but once you understand it's simple because I added in my uh, OBS earlier via NDI and it looked pretty good. Now, the other thing you got it too is of course you can add that preset by clicking the P plus and then it'll add as a preset as well. So you can now go to the preset one, which is this, and then you can go to the preset two, which is of course your keyboard cam, which is pretty nice. Now you of course can do some other stuff with this as well and add three presets. So if you want to do something else, you can go for it. So if you're doing maybe like a school lesson or teacher work, or maybe you're trying to teach something in class, this is when I would say the presets are the best thing for you. And this is kind of what this webcam is more made for. It's not made for just streaming. It's more made for like uh, lectures, college uh, classes, student classes, all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, it's very good. It's very good for what it does. Now, the other thing to keep in mind too, is this has some other features like human tracking. So if we do this, for example, here, it's gonna start blinking. And once it turns blinking, turns blue, you of course can now start walk around your studio. It's gonna track your face. When it tracks your face, of course you can do your thing. If you're like teaching something, you wanna point at something and like emphasize something, you can do that. And of course you are gonna sit back down and track you when you sit back down. And of course you hold it up like this. It of course relock and it's not track you anymore, which is pretty nice. Now, originally I was going to use this to actually uh, do a basketball. So I was thinking about streaming basketball outside of court and using the human tracking to actually track my face and a group of people. Now, I can say this most likely would work. The problem with it was is that the latency to the actual connection wasn't good enough to the point where I could actually like do it. So like that's where the NDI thing I was talking about, how like the wireless is not particularly the best. And that's something I, I just really want to emphasize because this should have been be able to connect via USB-C to your actual OBS and stuff like that. I don't know. Just a missed opportunity big time. But the tracking is really, really good. Don't get me wrong. But of course, that's why I would just say if you're using lectures, the tracking will be nice because then you'll be able to point stuff at the board and I'll be just big. Now, the other features it does have is a zoom feature. If you make a little L like this and you push in, of course, zoom in on your face or zoom in on wherever your canvas is. And of course, you close your hand 
do it again pull back out it should just pull back out it might take a second or two but it zooms in and out pretty well and of course you can adjust it so let's say for example you want just a little bit it should do a little bit but it's not particularly the best i'm doing this i assume they're gonna do some more optimization later and that way it'll actually be better but the timing it is okay now another thing to keep in mind too is it does have a recording on it so if you do like this it'll start recording and of course yep it starts recording like you saw there it's gonna make a sound and everything and if you do it again it's gonna stop recording which is pretty cool now the only thing with this is it does not come with a micro usd cable not micro usd cable micro uh usd card oh my god micro micro sd card man I, it's literally 3 a.m i i'm i'm tripping i'm sorry um but the thing with it, it doesn't come with that and of course you need to actually get one of those to put on the camera itself so that way you can record your 4k video onto it or a 1080p video and you also need to update the firmware which is not a really hard process you couldn't just like link it up the device and update the device and you're all set to go there and with that you're good now those are all the things with it all right we covered the presets we covered the actual human tracking we covered the zoom in zoom out and the recording the recording's really nice so i do like that i think like if you're somebody who wants to have like an on to go camera and use this you can with just your phone love you're you're someone who uses your phone and just that and then maybe like a wireless mic like a rv linear mic that'd be really good uh and if you're someone who's teaching classes and stuff like that this webcam is actually pretty insane if you use the ndi now let's get to the final conclusion this is a 500 dollars webcam and i want to say it's only good for people who are looking to get use it for teaching uh for maybe some interviews and stuff like that and maybe for on to go travel for recording onto the webcam itself now for people who are doing content creation in uh, like streaming all together i would say this 500 dollars would not be worth your investment and the reason why i'm saying that is because for me personally like i said earlier you cannot connect this via usb c to your computer and just directly record that into obs or use the application that the tiny uses to make it simpler i was really hyped i was really hyped for this webcam like obs bot thank you again for sending me out this but i do think you have so much more potential with this webcam that you're just barely missing out on like yo the people who i said earlier you can use this for this is good really really good but for you people who are just doing streaming and content creation this is not worth your investment i would recommend like in the obs tiny 2 or get the insta 360 because they really directly have their own application and then you just plug and play with well, this one it's more like you need to know how to work with ndi but you also need to have a good network setting on top of that too they'd to be able to fully utilize this webcam and for me personally what i'm looking for a webcam for my viewers right now because i'm focusing on people who like gaming and streaming this is something that's a little bit more complex and it kind of goes above that coverage but if you are someone who purely needs to use it for educational purposes for teaching a lecture or doing some meetings and stuff like that this webcam is for you so that is my final thoughts on the obs bot webcam if you guys like my review video it was honest and stuff like that they did not pay me at all to do this review video they just merely sent me out the camera and i gave my honest thoughts if you did enjoy that though make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed to some future tech content tech rant out